Good evening, you're watching News Break with me, Sanket Upadhyay. There's a new software in town. It's called Chat GPT. What is it? Is it a game changer or a misinformation machine? Well, let's first start by telling you, I mean, ideally, if you are not glued to technology, uh, the techies will call you as someone who's living under a rock. But still, for those who do not know, Chat GPT is a chat bot which has been launched by OpenAI. It's an artificial intelligence company. It was launched on the 30th of November 2022. It can draft emails, college essays, other content. It can write personalized lesson plans for students. It can generate ideas for classroom activities, can serve as an after hours tutor. Now, Chat GPT sets a record. Because it is doing all of this, it has the fastest growing user base and it has still not been rolled out to the masses, to the public and yet has a fastest growing user base. It's estimated 100 million monthly active users just two months after its launch. Chat GPT is the fastest growing consumer application in the history says a UBS study, nearly 13 million unique visitors have used chat GPT a day in January. TikTok took about nine months after its global launch to add 100 million users. And by the way, chat GPT is not even an app. It's a website. So they've not launched an app. Instagram took two and a half years after global launch to add 100 million users. And look at the speed at which this chat GPT, which is not even a proper app, has been able to taste success. But is this the world's greatest cheating machine ever? Educators say chat GPT can be used for grand scale cheating. They say chat GPT makes it far too easy to use it as a shortcut for essays. US schools have banned the use of chat GPT fearing plagiarism and misinformation. It has also been banned in Bengaluru colleges because it is being used. Colleges are exploring measures to prevent students from depending on AI tools like Chat GPT and not using their own imagination. And amid criticism, Chat GPT creator has rolled out imperfect tool to help teachers spot potential cheating. Now there are pitfalls of Chat GPT. For instance, uh, it might generate factually incorrect information, might produce harmful instructions, limit, uh, it has limited knowledge, and we put all of this to test, which we are going to show you in just a short moment. But first, let's listen in to what Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella had said about ChatGPT. He talks about ChatGPT at the World Economic Forum. He shared an instance where a man in rural India used the application to do government work. A foundational model that was developed in the West Coast of the United States a few months before had made its way to, to a developer in India who then sort of added value to it to make a difference in a remote villager's life. And I've never seen that type of diffusion. So what exactly is Chat GPT capable of doing? We decided to give this software some hard time. Let's get cracking. So let's ask some easy questions. First of all, define itself. What is chat GPT? So we're going to ask this question. Let's see what it says. The reply is on the screen. What is chat GPT? It says chat GPT is a conversational AI, artificial intelligence language model developed by OpenAI. It's a variant of GPT architecture that's fine-tuned, blah, 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 right? It gives its own reply. Let's kick things up one notch. What are the limitations of chat GPT? Let's make it uncomfortable. So I asked this question, it starts answering chat GPT like any language has limitation. Number one, it acknowledges it has bias. The model has been trained on a large data set of text. Number two, context sensitivity, limited common sense. So all those using this for homework or even for their college exercise, factual accuracy, don't trust chat GPT, chat GPT itself is telling you that, sensitivity to language structure, it believes in five points 
what its biggest weaknesses are. So that's there on the screen right now, the big problems that chat GPT has. Okay, let's ask some teta meta questions. Let's see how updated the database is. So explain the new tax regime in Indian budget 2023. I am sorry, but my knowledge is cut off. It is 2021 and I do not have information about the Indian budget 2023, but you can check the official government websites or reliable news sources for the latest updates. So, it admits that its knowledge is cut off at 2021. That is a big problem which this software faces. Let us ask the software to do something which many people have tried. Uh, in the United States with their political leaders. I am going to try it right here. Poem, poem on Rahul Gandhi. Come on. Here is a poem on Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi, a leader so bright, inspiring the masses with his sight. He walks with grace. He speaks with care. The nation listens. They are aware. With a vision so clear and a mission so true, he strives to bring and goes on and on and on, stands for the poor for the marginalized too, with a heart full of love and a soul full of fire. The Congresses are going to love this and the poem goes on and on and on, still not stopped. It's writing a fairly long poem on Rahul Gandhi and finally it gets over by saying, here's to a brighter tomorrow with Rahul Gandhi leading the way with glee. So the congressmen would say, chat GPT is our thing, you know, it praises our leader. That's the thing. It praises Rahul Gandhi. Fantastic. How about a poem on Narendra Modi? Let's see what this software does. Here's a poem on Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi, a leader of might with a vision so clear and a heart so bright. Doesn't it sound a little repeti repetitive? Maybe some paragraphs have been picked up from the Rahul Gandhi, uh, Rahul Gandhi poem. With a purpose strong and will so true, he strives for progress for me and you. He leads India forward even higher and higher. So here's to Narendra Modi, a leader so rare. May his vision always be clear. May his mission be fair for a nation that's strong, people that's free, brighter tomorrow. With Narendra Modi leading the way with glee. So basically, the Rahul Gandhi poem, words Rahul Gandhi replaced with Narendra Modi. That's what chat GPT has done for you. So it is a, a sort of a people pleaser if you put it in a political context. Okay, uh, Bollywood better or South Indian cinema? Give it some hard time. It's subjective to say whether Bollywood or South Indian cinema is better as it depends on personal preferences and taste. Ah, playing diplomatic, lovely. Exactly what I expected. And now it's going into regions. What constitutes South India? Both Bollywood and South Indian cinema have their, uh, what a people pleaser this software. Let us ask some more questions. Best cricket team in the world. Let us see what it says. As of my knowledge cut off in 2021, the best cricket team in the world is determined by their ranking of the ICC and Rankings can fluctuate, gives a long paragraph. So that's the good thing about this software, that it is going to give you a coherent paragraph or many paragraphs, which you can then present as your own view. But do remember that it is open to interpretation. Let me ask another question. A lot of people have been using this to cheat. So how does one avoid cheating using chat GPT. I know I am being notorious. If you want to avoid cheating using chat GPT, here are a few tips. Verification of information, that is point number one. Point number two, awareness of limitations. It could be biased or inappropriate. Factual accuracy, it says please do check that. Use of multiple sources. So it's just a cool toy basically, don't trust it too much. 
responsibility for outputs ultimately the responsibility for the outputs generated by the model lies with the user and then it says it is important to use the model ethically and with the intention of generating accurate and responsible responses that is what it says. So it is failed we have established that uh, obviously it does not have a database beyond 2021 and most of the responses that it gives you are very dated and might I also add extremely diplomatic. Chat GPT believes in not offending anyone. Will it work? You try out. Try it out. Be a part of this community of uh, ever growing uh, Chat GPT users. Jay Kapoor is a tech influencer. I am sure he has had a shot at Chat GPT. Uh, we also have Dr. Shubhi Chaturvedi and Gaganpreet Puri. Uh, Dr. Chaturvedi is uh, the Global SVP, Chief Corporate Affairs and Public Policy Officer of InMobi Group and Mr. Puri is uh, Managing Director, Risk and Regulatory, Alvarez and Marshall. Thank you very much. Let me first begin with you, Jay Kapoor. So we uh, tried Jet, uh, Chat GPT today and uh, I mean I am not speaking on anyone's behalf, this is just my own assessment. Uh, it has its fair share of limitations. Yet it has caught the imagination and fancy of everyone around the world. Why do you think so? I think it's just a easy website that you can put in anything. There's no limitation and you can get a response and the response feels like magic. Like, oh, tere ye kaise ho? like <laughs> technology is advanced kar gi and all that. So, but the biggest disadvantage of chat GPT or anything like that is it's too generic. It's too basic. Like it does not produce insights. Agar professors struggle kar rahe ya teachers struggle kar rahe assignment check karne ko, just look for insights. Just look ki isme kuch detail hai ya nahi. Because beyond, it can't go beyond basic. That's what I think. Okay. Dr. Chaturvedi, what is your view about its uh, uh, real life application? I'll come to the risks later. I don't want to sound like a, you know, a very pessimistic person, negative person who does not want to brace technology. But uh, it's it's good part and possible use. Sanket, you are asking very deep provocative questions like any reasonably intelligent human being would interrogate something which has seen a lot of hype and commercial application. We have to see this in the context. What is the function of a machine made by engineers? It's to make sure that it enhances productivity. There are two parts to the debate. One is the general fear and paranoia, which is what starts with anything to do with artificial intelligence. Will it remove jobs? Will it make sure that our children are not thinking individuals anymore? Uh, see chat GPT in the framing that we are meant to see it, that of course people will look for shortcuts. India loves Jugaad. We look for hacks and we look for how do we make sure that our work gets lighter? That doesn't mean that you walk into a public library, see it like a collection of books and you're absolutely right that the information is not updated. It's a transmission language processing model. So I played around with chat GPT and it, it's, ah, it's an interesting find? experience hmm. because uh, you're absolutely right when you put in the poem, it, it makes sure that the results are duplicated. On the same tab, whatever you're teaching because it's uh, learning whatever you're putting into the database. So one is it calls for inputs that are already existing in the database. So not just, you know, one kind of bias, you will also see racial bias, cognitive bias, gender bias, geographical bias, but what can you do with it? If you're smart enough, everyday manual task where, you know, organizations have sort of become bloated or where there are smaller startups, smaller organizations, which can't depend on such large teams. If we put it to good use in terms of ensuring that uh, not the entire power of computation of the human mind, but day to day tasks can be easily accorded, um, executed and it delivers results where you can build on it. So which is why somebody like you, where you have a worldview, you've traveled, you've read books, you've experienced cinema and there'll be a layered response. It's not just what's happening now. Therefore, there's no response to the new tax regime. Or if you were to ask opinion or, you know, deduction or inferences, as my previous panelists spoke, it will not be able to do it. But when I 
put in a problem statement like you mentioned an essay and i break it down if i ask for a marketing plan or if i say i want a social media posting schedule for a small business which deals mm. in sector a mm. it makes work lighter and that's what machines or artificial intelligence is really supposed to solve for yeah, the yeah. question that we need to grapple with uh, sanket and i'll just stop here is um teachers have to teach in a manner that has to remain engaging contextual relevant hmm. so it's a two way problem i've been a professor at lsr for five and a half years you teach some of the brightest kids you work twice as hard to make sure that what you're teaching is interesting enjoyable relevant so that's really how i'd frame the chat gpt hype versus truth conversation nice Nice. Now, Mr. Puri, uh, as a uh, MD of uh, you know in the uh, specialising in risk and regulatory, wh- what is your opinion on Chat GPT? Are you greeting this with scepticism? Do you see uh, possible good use of this application? And what do we need to worry about? I mean, yeah. I'll be really worried if my kids start uh, if they delegate their homework. In any case, they treat Alexa as you know <laughs> half the work is delegated to her. Yeah, and you're very right, Sanket. Again, I'm one of those who extensively tested out ChatGPT, and I must say, it's so cool. It's actually ultra cool. I think, to me, the the, the absolute brilliance is the articulation. I mean, the way it expresses coherent you know, expression out. Yeah, it's very coherent. I mean, it's it's so lucidly put, and you know, I mean, let it draft a simple letter, like a letter to a vendor or something. You just get a, a fantastic output out. But you know, I just just from a, from an overall perspective, I think you know, as human beings, uh, we are always bound by you know rules of society and ethics and morality. And I think one really talks about artificial intelligence, you know, the, and and we expect it to largely self-regulate. Uh, I think there is this definitely, you know, it will go back to how it's trained and and what it does on those things. I think you know, you uh, what everyone has said is that the three. I guess to me the most important points is when you talk about plagiarism versus originality. I think that's absolutely one of the debates one must have. Fact versus bias. You know, clearly, even you demonstrated in what you showed. I mean, it's it's how you really train the model. And to me, the third very important part is the end use versus misuse. And I think, uh, you know, what really is the end use of what you're trying to do with it versus can it be used. For a potential of misuse, and I know we've seen cases like you know how to commit a murder. It probably will not you know give you a thing out saying I can't do it. But if you break that question down and ask it in different formats, you might get to the answer because you know if you are able to beat the system, you can. So to me, I think you know as uh, uh, you know uh, because you know you said children. I think it's important. You know, Spider Man said, "With great great power comes great responsibility." And I think you know when really one talks about Chat GPT, I think unless we talk about responsible AI. And and what responsibility it has, uh, not just for the person using it, but every time you run a, uh, you know, you run something on, you run a query on it, and it's producing an answer. It's again learning from that answer and putting it back into the system. Exactly. So millions of people and, all and over the world. the number of people teaching it right now. Yeah. A record yes, number yes. of people helping this software become better and better each each minute. Yeah. And then you talk about you know obviously because you largely expected to self-regulate, and I think to me that's really the the governance system one would really need to put into it to really talk about you know whether the end use is is actually an end use or it's a misuse. And I think that really is a fundamental. I wouldn't really call it a ethical or a moral question, but I would I would ultimately call it a responsibility. Question. You think you think Jay Kapoor that there should be first of all uh, this will learn on the job uh, as more and more people try it out. Secondly. Uh, maybe this just becomes new technology which then can be applied by various uh, tech giants or uh, you know various tech platforms uh, and each having their own version of this this uh, this technology for instance amazon alexa and google home are doing the same thing in an audio form but this is written Yes, uh, I think Google is working on it because I saw some remote uh, reports that Sundar Pichai conducted a very big meeting that, hey, this thing is coming up. We should also develop something. So this is definitely Google is trying its best because uh, I also read an article which said that Chat GPT cleared a entry level software coder job at Google. So <laughs> I think they they are they are going to. make something similar in the future yeah dr chaturvedi uh, now uh, for a pertinent question i mean how do you stop uh, its misuse uh, the cheating which is very openly happening i mean people who don't know a word of english can 
write coherently. Imagine a weird situation where there are two Congress supporters who both use chat GPT, produce the same poem and offer it to their leader. Or the same thing happens in the BJP. And then when they collate their poem, they will realize that it's same word to word, word for word. Uh, Sanket, so that's, I, I think that's a good problem to have because what yeah. you have, uh, you know, parties, carders, um, one responding that we should never look at shooting the messenger. So just as when we look at tools and technology, it's a two way street, garbage in, garbage out. It's very important to understand that this is again a language learning processing tool with a limited access to database. It's not even going live to the internet. So I see this as a giant, you know, unless media, common media resources like Wikipedia, I haven't logged into it for a long time now this is where it's making meaning it is giving you information that's relevant and when it comes to checks and balances i tried it with two tabs logged out looked at results again it was not learning from my results it already has a set of databases that's where i wanted a small you know factual correction that it will give you results that you are tutoring so when it comes to information they worked on it for three years and then mm. they released the model and that this is what it's also doing is it's also pushing the other large tech companies to look at more innovation which make okay. make life better so when it comes to checks and balances on fake news and that's very real we are still in a post covid world of uh, oh, veracity verification multiple sources which is why a media house that has credibility and trust like ndtv with a clear editorial policy it's very very relevant and other softwares turn it in which is something that researchers use on a regular basis yeah uh, looks at plagiarism checks where other softwares are building as in as as, as mr puri said uh, with great power comes great responsibility and this is a powerful tool which is going to learn every day in different ways and perhaps will update its database also today it knows nothing beyond 2021 tomorrow it will know everything till the last second so then what do you do? So how do you use this responsibility uh, is going to be the next big challenge. However, what a fascinating toy, I must say. As of this moment, this definitely is one. Thank you very much for joining us. We are uh, heading into a short break right now. You also try out Chat GPT.